was Hanson on Bop off of our new album, String Theory. It's a double album. Yeah. With the symphony orchestra. Yes, and that's Zach. Yes. Oh. What time? Oh, the time? <laughs> yes. It's uh, almost 12. <laughs> <laughs> you are sacked. No, the time. <laughs> Come on. Uh, 22 to 12. 22 to 12. 22 to 12, yeah. On ABC Radio Melbourne and Victoria. Come on, guys. Yes. How have you been well, doing this? I know. Well, the well, I haven't been on ABC Melbourne and Victoria ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't been doing this job. This is my first first day. So. Zach's sacked for the back announce. Isaac's had a crack at it, and Taylor hasn't said a word. <laughs> you know? You, you're perceived as wise as, you know, less than... Well, you little, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, so that was it. We got that part right, though. The Hanson, yeah, uh, that yeah. was Hanson string theory. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you probably know where you're playing too. Played last night at the Palais Theatre at the Zoo this Friday and Saturday, but both shows sold out. Yeah. Congratulations. We've been talking to Ralph about enduring success and whether yeah. wisdom comes from longevity, and even at the precociously young age that you three still have. Yeah. Yeah. Have you have you acquired wisdom on the journey? Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know if I would say wisdom. You have perspective, and maybe and maybe perspective is the root of wisdom, maybe in some sense. Which, by the way, the performance was really great. Oh, yeah, 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 radio. Yeah. This this whole on the fly thing is is not always uh, easy. Yeah, one thing I will say is um, time. Man, that's the one asset you can never get back, and the one you have to spend constantly. So, uh, I was talking to somebody last night at our show about how just starting early, like that's such a gift. You know, we started, we first came to Australia when I was like 12. And um, and now you're? Uh, 33. So, I mean, you, you, you cannot uh, say to young people more, start now, figure it out now. Go make mistakes now. It can also be a detriment, though, too, because if you if you do start too early, you can miss other other really important life like being normal. Experiences. Uh, uh, like see, being normal. So he's, everyone has a goal to be normal. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is normal? I think it's a really yeah. um, honestly. I think it's a really big lie that we tell ourselves. Uh, we tell ourselves the lie of you know wait, be normal, don't miss out, and we say that because we're afraid of failure and we're afraid of hard work. And, and the result is no matter what you do, I mean, that's really what this whole album, String Theory, is about. It's about, like, go for it now. Because it's easy to fail. It's hard to risk. 
And so you might as well risk as much as possible because that's the only way to have great results. It's about lies, basically. I don't know whether I risked anything <laughs> per, 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 personally, and I just carried away with music and the, the idea of... Ma I made my first guitar out of a piece of wire and a, a bit of wood and found yeah. that if you moved your finger up, you could change the note. And then somebody... <laughs> my mother obviously thought I was gifted and bought me a, a 10 shilling tin xylophone thing with eight notes on it and I picked out tunes on that and then I got a piano and I still don't read anything. But I, I don't think I had any any intention of ever making a living at music that was that was just a happy accident for me but are you driven by a fear of failure as has just been i'm claimed? very conscious of not getting things right if i don't get things right within my own you know criteria i get I'm well, yeah. depressed. i think i think that the the comment too is is more that find what you love and i think that the message of n normalcy i mean I, I don't know any person that i respect that says my goal is to be normal you know, it's one thing, to, I think, well-adjusted, happy, um, you know, at yeah. peace, satisfied. Sa you know, <laughs> I think those are good things. But most, pe I mean, f I, for us, we have definitely had a sort of strange life in many respects. Like, we kind of don't really line up with most of our friends, even, that are our age. But one thing that we have had is spending a lot of our lives doing something that really fulfills us greatly. How did you find yeah. it? And you too, Ralph. Was it, did music, were you in a house full of music, Ralph, that wasn't your experience? No, was it you had really. to find a piece I, of wood? And no, I think that I was affected very much by the music of the pre-rock and roll, this is, of course. Yeah. And so my mum used to sing these maudlin ballads about, you know, we'll meet again and uh, it was kissing her now because my dad left home early. But they affected me. I thought she'd made them up almost you know yeah. there's only one radio station so music had a lot of power for me and the the fact that she was yeah. moved to sing in the kitchen these very sad songs about desertion and separation yeah. and hoping to meet again so I, I was affected but i think you brothers have got something so i worked with the everly brothers one time there's oh, something man. going Ooh. going on with siblings that is just extraordinary listen to those harmonies just now you know, brothers can do this, but th I was just curious as how, how you get on. You know, you should, yeah. you know have you separate well, dressing we, rooms we, or do we, we don't get on badly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, otherwise, it'd be hard to be a band for 27 years. Um, we have some com we have some common threads. I mean, I think you know, not to be weird, but it's a little bit like a marriage. You know, when you meet a, we people will come in on us. We're still together. We have been playing for you know 27 years since we were kids. Yeah, and I'm 35, um, but. You know, when you see somebody with a good marriage or, you know, that's still together, you don't say, do you ever fight? Mm. Right? You know they do. Yeah. <laughs> but they somehow don't end it because of the fight. And I think that would be sort of with us how we get on is they're, one, we're all pretty different. It's sort of like destination is the same. We're going to that island. But one person's on a you know, speedboat, one's on a canoe, one's on a glider. Everybody's trying to get there. The same, do, you know, different ways. Do you ways, need to, you though, know? have a hierarchy of what the relationship is? Is it band first, brother second, or always brothers first? Because always band first, yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's <laughs> a, <laughs> no question. I actually, I have yeah. to say, it probably is kind of band first in yeah, many respects. First. I don't think of you as my brother at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually, hey, this is your brother. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it, it, like anything, it's, it's a negotiation every day. It's not whether yeah. we fight. I think um, the truth is, um, I think fighting is, we, f we fight all the time. The, the difference is that we don't stop fighting, right? I think that's, people reach a point where they, their arguments get too much and they go, oh, I'm just sick of fighting with you. And so we, we just kind of go, oh, it's, it's round one? When's round two start? Exactly. The, the, the other thing, thing is learning is a little bit like somebody speaking German and French and you've got to learn how to translate properly. And you've got to learn each other's language to some extent and accept certain things that cannot change. Uh, you know, I think about the Alcoholics Anonymous kind of phrase, which is, you know, accepting the things that I cannot change and being okay with it, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, there, to some degree or another, that is, I think, a key to to you know to life in many respects so so there's a lot of mutual respect not just yeah. creatively but even in this conversation here now you leave space for each other yeah well you know you're well rested you I learn think. quickly <laughs> uh, <that's laughs> you learn quickly that you need drummers and piano players and guitarists and, you know what i mean like you you need different roles and yeah. um people will uh, add different different things and um you know, probably the the biggest thing I think um, that would enlighten people about our music that is sort of connected to this fighting concept, right? Uh, Ralph's talking about dealing with life through music, mm -hmm. right? Songs written about 
how to process what you're going through and mm. your mom and Bob Dylan. I mean, so much of our music is about processing life. I mean, you heard Umbop. Umbop is about making choices and about that few things will last. And in an Umbop, it's you'll be gone. there. You'll be old. You'll be at the end of your life. Uh, and it's, so when you stand on stage and you you sing, say, 23 songs in a row about processing life and coming to conclusions and persevering, you can't come off stage and not remember that. It, it's sort of like a free therapy session every time you play a concert. You were all uh, speaking outside, Ralph, yeah. uh, about Woody Guthrie. Is there yes. a starting point for all music? Uh, well, it was very... It, for me, Woody's... I mean, I hadn't been looking for anything, but, I mean, I like music, and there was a lot yeah. of... Uh, I grew up just... Uh, uh, the rock and roll was, uh, came along when I was about 12, and song, songwriters had begun to... But then when I heard Woody, there was a combination of something something worth saying and in a very simple guitar accompaniment so it was very accessible and i could i started then i learned to flat pick and then the, the whole intrigue of what you can do with one guitar came about because woody led me to sunny terry and brownie mcgee yeah, and yeah, then exactly. Brian Boy fuller and the great black guitar players and so on led so Joshua, a lovely it goes. <laughs> well yeah. i had just such a wonderful journey and and yep. we weren't it wasn't like I mean, so I'm doing the old soldier bit, but you couldn't get everything immediately. Yeah. You ordered your album. You didn't know what yeah. it was going to be like. You waited a week. You paid exactly. 37 and 6. You come home, you devise. You, um, you read all the notes on the back. Yeah. You play the record, and you, then you might find somebody. Say, oh, you like that? You like this? The network was much slower, but it still occurred, yeah. and it would, remained tremendously exciting, and it was a lovely journey. Still but is. Yeah, well, I mean, still I think, is. too, I think Woody is, Guthrie yeah, is, a, in a lot of ways, uh, to singer-songwriters, and, and a lot, to a lot of elements of songwriting and pop music as a whole, but particularly to folk music, what people like Robert Johnson are to blues. Oh, my favorite. Right? So, you know, you, 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 there are certain people that are seminal in, in that kind of progression. And, I mean, honestly, you know, modern R&B, you know, thank you very much, uh, Motown. You know, like, it, like there are certain... Well, yeah. points uh, where things happen and and and, 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 ha and leave a and leave a unchangeable kind of uh, mark mm -hmm. on, on the future mm -hmm. so yeah. I think and also oh. we're from Oklahoma and that's where Woody Guthrie is from so, that's yes, we were striking up that yeah. I mean one of the things that um, I would also say is you know we're talking a lot about stories now about how um, music becomes a part of people's lives and we've now experienced that because we got started you know early enough that we really have a history with a lot of people that have followed us and we've seen how you write something and you it's for you right and then it becomes it, once you share it it's everyone's and i think that that desire to keep experiencing that you know that connection you know really to me music is and good art is connection and so i think that's what keeps all that's what keeps you going back to it and go over, overcoming the question marks you know what's interesting about what you have done with this new album string theory is collaborated with david campbell who mm -hmm. has i guess revisioned them in a way and it's the same with you working with tony visconti mm. you're working with collaborators that bring something mm -hmm. to your music with david campbell for example did he show you stuff about the songs that you'd known for so long that you hadn't known about before I mean, he, in, in yeah, certain in ways, respects, he does. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, one of the cool things about uh, David, which is actually like Tony Visconti as well, is uh, David was involved in our first record. He did the arrangements, the string arrangements on the first two records that we did. So we have a longstanding relationship with him for David. 23 yeah. years. Or and, and, but, and, but strings is a different thing than an orchestra. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a really important thing. I think that the biggest thing with David, David has such a rich history. He's obviously our elder by a lot. And so you can look to him to say, David, how does this work? How should this work? And uh, we would give David ideas and go, here's what we think it should sound like. Here's and David would, would, would send it back to us and go, this is what you meant. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, and, sir. And, yes, sir. Uh, that was a really great process. It was uh, amazing how collaborative he is. But um, your, your collaboration is first and foremost with each other. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you bring in someone else. Ralph, have you ever had that strong a collaboration with anybody else? Not really. I don't know. I sort of No enduring been... musical partnerships. Not really, no. I've just sort of I've, I've I have. Obviously I've worked with other people, but in the end I kind of know what I want to what I want to do and you know, and I I've just worked towards that. I I've enjoyed when... collaborating with people, but uh, for example, I've only ever written Two songs, I think, with other people. When has someone worked with you and shown you something you hadn't yourself seen in your oh, music? Oh, well, that's easy. There was a... 
the, it came from the guitar because everything I do comes from the first position on the guitar, the first five frets. I mean, a bit like James Taylor, I find that I don't run out of ideas on that in that area. But there was a guy I met in Paris called Gary Peterson. He was from California, and he'd had lessons from one of the last great black um, ragtime guitar players. And I, it was like I was hearing the guitar for the first time again. So I have to say he opened... He, the possibilities, the harmonic possibilities and the swing that you can get, you know, if you approach it in a certain way. And and although I don't read music, I've discovered my bits of harmony and my bits of knowledge. By the way, I've just got to say, uh, these guys are so articulate. And I mean, you ask if there's any wisdom. I mean, I can't express myself like these guys are doing, but um, I think you get the message. But this is, is fascinating for me to sit here listening to so, to see how much you put into your music and, and how you approach it and mm. talk about it. I think you've, they've answered your question <laughs> very well. You're very kind. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that. Mm. But, but that's a collaboration there or, or uh, a mentorship musically. Yes. What about with the words? I never tire of poetry, and I read mm. a lot of poetry. I've yeah. always got a book of poems. Most of it, it mystifies me because I don't understand how what how a poem is decided it's a poem when it doesn't appear to rhyme or I haven't quite followed the the syllabic you know meter or whatever but I like poems that like I'm very fond of Dylan Thomas one of our great British poets and uh, he's Welsh a poet and um, just for all the Welsh people out there yes, <laughs> yeah. he's a well, they get them to come really <laughs> and Irish poetry I like the romantic sort of poetry and uh, I just think it's a wonderfully uh, wonderful art and a great discipline and and Leonard Cohen was a published poet before oh, he yes, recorded any songs at yeah. all. Yeah, for instance, yeah. long yeah. tradition there. Are you guys poets? Well, I hope so. I don't know if we would. Ca I don't know if we would call ourselves that. But I mean, if you're if you're writing songs, you know, whether it's good or bad, it is poetry. Um, mm. I mean, one of talking about lyric. I mean, this project particularly, we were sort of you know up against a very challenging question, which was how to approach something where you're going to put all these possibilities into a symphonic arrangement and a deciding to focus on the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, we made it. It's a double album, a symphony. You're going to do this, all this work. We spent two plus years doing it. And what we came back to was the the lyric is what we have to build this around. Mm -hmm. And so this the story and the, the poetry, um, it was like the savior in a way because it allowed us to say, if it doesn't fit into this, this narrative where this thing is going, it's out. And that gives you almost... Uh, I met an architect, I love architecture, and architect was like, I was saved by architecture because it gave me all the things I couldn't do. And I think in a way, uh, you know, as an artist, when you sometimes, when you're racked with possibility, some of the beauty of a guitar and a voice is, hey, this is what you have, this is it, you know, and it brings it into focus. And so the lyric is the guiding force for the, sh uh, you know, something that has all of these possibilities. While you're in town, you might want to go and have a look. There's an exhibition of Escher, M.C. Escher, mm -hmm. yeah. at the moment at the right. National Gallery here. So there's an example where architecture actually can yes. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. be, be making you think right. that it can do things it can't do, just like music makes <laughs> right. you sometimes Escher. think yeah. that right. things can happen that yeah, aren't no, that, happening. That gallery looks fascinating. It looks oh really God. interesting. It's a sensational exhibition. It's uh, yeah. not to be missed while you're here. Cool. But that, I mean, in a way, it's the, the illusion, whether it's the story that creates the illusion or in Esh's case, it's the, the designs that yeah. create yeah. the illusion yeah. or whether it's the, the, mm. the power of the music that's mm. creating the illusion. Yeah. But either way, what you're doing is you're taking the audience on a, on yeah. a trip with you, actually. We're, yeah, all, we're all searching really hard. All of us. <laughs> Some harder than others. You know, we're what, for, what for purpose, for, for, for a reason, for mm. being. So, so why a beer company? You've got to enjoy the ride, guys. For people who don't know, the Hanson Brothers have started up a beer company and the Hop Jam Beer and Music Festival in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. That's, That's right. That's part of their entrepreneurial activity. You know. Um, before we get close to the end, I want to know, I know there's three of you, it's always worked that well, but what about if there was a fourth member called Ralph McTell and you just did a little song with us right oh, now? Man. Any chance? This is all oh, beyond wow. me. Well, this you're putting us on this. This is yeah. A-level music. A bit of a Guthrie on the guitar yeah. or something, oh, wow. anything you're going to do to The boys were talking about maybe using some Oklahoma influences yeah. on a yes. project in the yeah. future. Yeah. And why not? It's got such a rich history, not just through Woody's narrative songs, but the great film Grapes of Wrath and Steinbeck and all those a lot yeah. of stuff there. Oh uh, yeah, and Leon, Hanson, Leon Russell is our friend and legend, you know, out of Oklahoma. And Hanson so many... do the Dust Bowl ballads. <laughs> okay, there you go. Well, we, we're discussing. Yeah. We have for a long. In fact, in the last three years, uh, we've lost three friends who were really legend, you know, legendary Oklahoma. Some more known than others. Roy Clark uh, just passed. We, we were friends with Leon Russell. 
Um, and then our friend Steve Ripley, who was a band called The Tractors, and he was also played with engineer, Bob Dylan, producer, an engineer, yeah, producer, probably. and brilliant guy. Yeah, red and Dirt music. Red Dirt, the whole idea of Red Dirt music and Red Dirt country is this Oklahoma deal, which is this fusion of blues and folk. And anyway, it's, um, it's talking about your roots. You know, I think maybe we're just reaching a point in our own lives where we're yeah. realizing we're beginning to lose those that, that really came before us. And it calls it causes you to sort of stop and take stock and realize like the things that you didn't even know were influencing you, like where you're from. Because um, we listen to soul music and R and B and Motown and Stax. That's what we made us want to play music. But as it turns out, guys like Leon and mm. you know this the rootsier stuff that was in our you know bones is actually sort of around us and has influenced what we've written, even when we didn't sort of consciously know it. So it the might have just influenced the subject matter almost more yeah. even than the actual music. So the itself. Tulsa mm-hmm. sound is a thing that was coined because of Leon Russell's group in the seventies and these guys and that JJ came Kale to California. Well. Yeah, JJ, JJ Kale. Kale. Yeah. Oh wow, and yeah. Muscle, Muscle Shoals. Do you guys got a? Oh yeah. Got a muscle shots, haven't kind of, been, haven't been, but we of course know and and one of the greatly. best music documentaries oh, I reckon I've yeah. ever yeah. seen. Incredible, yeah. Yeah. Seen it, yeah. We want to go down there and just set up and record. It's, uh, it's Alabama, though I think, isn't it? Uh, actually, uh, Northern Mississippi. Yeah, it's it's close. right in there. You you have just to be determined the corner, to go. Yeah, it's close. Just, just down the way. It's about eight hours away. <laughs> yeah, so we've looked back and and talking about that kind of really fundamental uh, history. But what about forward, Ralph? Do you what about new folk? Some of the new stuff that's coming out. Do you do you listen it, to? I think it's incredible. I don't think the music's ever been played, the traditional music's ever been played better in our islands than it is currently, but it's reached another, what it needs now is, a, is another Bob Dylan or a Burr Chance or a big personality right. that's writing songs and using all that stuff. The mm-hmm. techniques and the playing, the fiddle playing, the guitar playing. And, is oh, it the it, cultural environment to the politics? Is it, does, that make, does that make what, we, what I, we're looking for? I haven't found it. I mean, yeah. I'm... I'm perhaps a little bit out of the loop in that sense, you know, but I go once a year to the Folk Awards, which is wonderful and just mind-blowing, the, the quality of the musicianship and the singing and so on. Mm. But it's the writing. It's, it's using that, uh, that as, a, as a foundation and hearing the new mm-hmm. songs that I'm missing. And Billy Bragg was here doing Woody Guthrie right. last yeah. year. Oh, in fact, right. he was on this show just a few months ago as he was yeah. touring around with another show. It's just amazing how often Woody Guthrie comes up yeah. as a reference. Hey, look, congratulations on your enduring success. Isaac Zach and Taylor Hansen, who performed last night at the Palais Theatre. They're heading to the Sydney Opera House next week, but they're yeah. stopping off for Friday and Saturday. That would be tomorrow night and the night after at the Melbourne Zoo. Now, you'll have to steal, beg, borrow, or in some other way illicitly come by tickets because I'm told <laughs> they're both sold out. Whether 20,000 people turn up like they did at shopping centres when these guys were young, who the hell knows? Ralph McTell, tomorrow night at the Thornbury Theatre up in High Street, Thornbury, and then at Port Ferry Folk Festival. It's been wonderful to have you all comparing notes today on the Conversation Hour mm-hmm. with Jacinta Parsons, my co-host. Miff Warhurst, no stranger to the musical world. That Good morning true. to you. Good morning, John Fane. And what listeners won't know is that I'm standing up in the studio because there's so many people in here and it's almost <laughs> like I'm about to do BVs. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, so well, I can join you. you can join me. You're standing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, I can do it. No, it's, it's good. Get a I'm, dancer and a singer. <laughs> Not do really. what, do what, do what. Do what, do what, do what. Um, t- today on the show, we're talking immersive art. Are you familiar with the street artist Roan? No. Mm. He, do- he does those huge faces. Yes. Oh, yes, yes on the yes. buildings. Most, and sometimes on silos in yes. regional Victoria. Now I know he's, what you're talking He's taken about. over uh, an Art Deco mansion in the hills, Burnham Beaches. Do you know that building as you well? Sh- you sh- was going to be a restaurant and used to be also, well, Various public purposes, yep. Yeah, well, Ron's going to join us. He has. You set know, up the history of Burnham Beaches was the family home of the people who invented Aspro. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, pretty sure. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> wow. Maybe. A lot of drugs were taken there then. That's what I can surmise from that. <laughs> but the installation is immersive, and we'll learn all about immersive art with Roan today. So it's, uh, it's, it's a real movement that's happening in contemporary art at the moment. Cool. So that should be really interesting. And we're applying Greek myths to current day woes. Today we'll be looking at the Greek myth of, and my pronunciation is terrible, Eric Siegthen, which is controlling our appetites. Ah. And that's a modern day affliction that we'll apply to that Greek myth. Myths on the radio this afternoon. Hans and Ralph McTell, Jacinta Parsons, thank you all for coming. It's tw-